Hi, and welcome back. Let's continue our discussion on the math practices, how good mathematicians do math. We've been through math practices one through three, and today we are going to go through math practice four. Um, as we go through math practice four, we're going to be taking notes in this format. Um, we're actually going to switch this up today, and we are going to do an activity or an example to help us understand what it means. And then after that, that's when we're going to put it in our own words. And we'll finish up with the reflection. Um, I'm discovering that students are having a hard time with the reflection piece, so I will start helping you out with that. Um, you can write down what I help you write down, or you can choose a reflection or goal of your own. Let's get started by reviewing math practices. Math practice one, who can tell me what math practice one is? Good, I love the hands. I could use a few more, that's better. Uh, get me started, Seth. Make sure to problems and solve them out in them. Yes, make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. Now, the question I have is what does it mean to persevere in solving problems? Uh, Jaden. Not give up. Even when it's hard, we're going to keep on going. Let's move on to math practice two. Who can tell me math practice two? What is it? Good. Uh, let's go with Danielle. Reason abstractly, Reason abstractly and quantitatively. We have these images to help us remember. But now my question is, if I'm reasoning abstractly, what am I doing? What does it look like to reason abstractly? Let's look in our notes, see if we can pull that up. Reason abstractly, what does that mean? What am I doing? Jaden. Yeah, we're kind of taking that quantitative representation and simplifying it. Um, simplifying it how? What would I be using? Seth? No, not exactly. That sounds more like a quantitative. If I'm reasoning abstractly, Danielle? Yeah, we'd be using numbers, symbols, equations, things like that. So when I simplify it, it looks a little bit simpler because I'm using symbols and numbers in place of those words. So quantitatively, what would this look like if I'm reasoning quantitatively? We have this image to remind us. Let's look in our notes. Reasoning quantitatively, what does that look like? Yes, Daxton. Mm, you're close. Know what's going on. What else does quantitative mean? Carter? Real life. Yes, we're reasoning in the real life. We're taking real life situations that sometimes we then write as abstract equations to solve. And then I understand that it's not just x equals 7. It's x equals 7, and that 7 represents 7 cats or something like that. Okay, let's move on to math practice three. That was our last lesson. Math practice three, what does it mean? Or what, do, what is math practice three? I'll wait, there should be more hands on this. What is math practice three? That's better. Jamie. Construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others. It's absolutely right. What is the best way, in my opinion, what is the best way to construct viable arguments? Who remembers from yesterday, last lesson, Daxton? No, I think that that is a great way to critique the reasoning of others, but there's something specifically in math class to construct viable arguments. What would it be, Seth? Uh, Show your work, yes. Constructing viable arguments means that you're showing your work. You're writing sentences to explain your thought processes, to explain how you arrived at an answer. And now we are ready for math practice four. Very simply, just three words, model with mathematics. Let's get that written down in our notes. Math practice four, model with mathematics. And then right below that, we're going to dive right into the example. Doing the example will help us understand what this math practice means. All right, here's your example. Suppose you are selling t-shirts as a fundraiser for Key Club. The club makes $6.30 profit for every t-shirt sold. And then it says complete each model. Now, I don't want you to write anything just yet. I'll tell you when it's time to write. But I want us to understand what we are going to be doing. Understand the situation. And the directions are complete each model. And then below that, I have a section where it says word, a section where it says table, a section where it says equation, and a section where it says graph. So just based on that information, when I say complete each model and the math practice says model with mathematics. 
What do you think we're meaning when we say model with mathematics, just by looking at this example? Complete each model, and the math practice is model with mathematics. Waiting for a few more hands. Let those brains think about this. Turn them on. It says complete each model, and the math practice is model with mathematics. Let's see those hands. Seth. Not too bad. That's more like math practice one, where we're looking for making sense of the problem. Um, we can make sense of problems by following math practice four. When I say complete each model, what am I talking about in this problem? Yes, Daxton. Find different ways to solve problems. Specifically what for this problem? What are different ways that I want you to solve this problem? What do you see? Danielle? Yeah, we see a table. That's one way to solve the problem. We see a graph. That's one way to look at the problem. We see equations. That's one way to look at the problem. So when we're saying complete each model, we have all of these representations of the same problem. And so when I'm talking about modeling with mathematics, really what I'm talking about is using all of these representations to help us through a math problem. Here's where I want you to start writing things down. I've simplified the problem just for our note-taking purposes. We wrote down for example, and these are the words to write down. Selling t-shirts, $6.30 profit per t-shirt. Now, below that, we will have all of these models. And I'm going to have a quick discussion before you officially start copying all of this down. Try and format it in the same way. We have a section for this model, words. Next to that, we have a section for this model, which is table. Then we have a section for this model, which is equations, and a section for this model, which is the graph. And I want to talk about the graph first. You guys don't have graph paper. All you have is line paper. And what I'm expecting you to do is not to turn your line paper into graph paper, but to sketch a graph. So it's going to look like this, where I can draw a vertical line. Even without a ruler, I can pretty accurately draw one straight line. And then we'll just use the line on the paper to draw a horizontal line. Now we kind of have our coordinates plane. And again, I don't want to turn this into graph paper, but I'm going to utilize the lines that I already have. That can be 5. This line would be 10. This line would be 15. And then going across here, I'm going to make little hash marks. If I try to turn this into graph paper and draw a straight line, you can see that my line, as good as it is, is still not perfectly straight. And if I continue to do that with a whole bunch of them, then it gets to be really obvious just how awful it is. So again, we're not turning this into graph paper. We're doing a sketch of a graph. So I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm just going to use those hash marks at the bottom where I will label them 1 and 2 and so on. Okay, again, we're not turning it into graph paper. It's just a sketch. Keep that in mind as you return to your notes and start drawing that out. Online students, you might want to pause the video to give yourself enough time to get this all copied down into your notes. Uh, return to the video once you have this copied down. All right, let's go through this now, completing each model. Now that we've got our notes set up to complete them, now we'll actually complete them. So we're selling t-shirts, $6.30 profit per t-shirt in words. How can I summarize that? We already have this sentence stem formatted for us. Blank per t-shirt. What per t-shirt? Let's use some words. What is that going to be? Siley. But what? How, much, how many dollars per t-shirt? Yep, $6.30. I love that you went straight to the units. You knew that it was going to be dollars per t-shirt. That means you know that this, is your quantitative, tie that back into math practice too, this is your quantitative representation. We understand this problem. We're talking about $6.30 profit per t-shirt. Now, let's take that and let's sort of transition into a table where we start abstracting it just a little bit. It's not 100% abstract yet, but we're on our way there. The table started for us with the number of t-shirts 
being one, and the profit is $6.30. But what if we jump to a profit of $12.60? How many t-shirts is that going to be? Maverick, two t-shirts. And what if I jump to a profit of $18.90? I bet you know that this is what, uh, Dean? Three t-shirts for a profit of $18.90. So this is kind of the bridge on our way to getting to the equation. The equation is supposed to be using these symbols, where P is the symbol we'll use to represent profit, T is the symbol we'll use to represent the number of t-shirts sold, and we want to write an equation. You might be struggling with this because this is something that we are going to continue to practice this year in seventh grade. Um, for my eighth grade online students, this should be a little bit easier for you. You did it last year. How can we write the equation? Let's take a second and discuss with each other first. Utilize the information in the table. Let's go 30 seconds of discussion. Ready, set, go. All right, what is the equation? How can I write an equation here? What's the relationship? Let's see the hands. Thank you. Uh, Carter. Yes, that is exactly what we wrote in words, but how can I take that information and turn it into a profit? You're absolutely right, but can we make this transition and turn it into an equation for profit? How do we do that? What he said is really important, and this is where the table can really be helpful. If I were to go to the next stage and say, four t-shirts, what's the profit? Could you figure that out? Okay, what would you do to figure that out? Gabe? Okay, he forgot. Let's go to Maverick. Uh, $6 you would do $6.30 times four, right? And what if I skipped, instead of four in the table, what if I skipped to 10? What would you do? $6.30 times 10. So you are know, you know this relationship. Now we just need to abstract it. Do you see that connection to math practice too? We need to abstract it and turn that into an equation. So whatever I take for the number of t-shirts, which it's telling me t would be the number of t-shirts. So instead of four or instead of 10, I'm gonna be using t. But what do I do with that information? I take it and I multiply it by $6.30. And that's how I find the profit. So no matter what the number of t-shirts is, I take that number of t-shirts, I multiply it by $6.30, and that gives me the profit. And if you're struggling with that, that's okay. That's gonna be what we're talking about later on this year when we get to our proportions and writing equations. Um, but utilizing our tools, utilizing different models can help us get from one to the next. And now let's look at the graph. Now this graph is small, it's hard to see on the screen, so I'm just gonna go ahead to the next page where I have created a larger version of this graph. And you can see that along this x-axis, I'm measuring the t-shirts. And along the y-axis, I'm measuring the profits. The x-axis I'm counting by ones because I'm going to sell one t-shirt at a time. And the y-axis, instead of counting by ones just to kind of save some space, I decided to count by fives because each t-shirt is a little bit more than five. So you can see I went over here. One t-shirt would be $6.30 profit. I know that because that's what it said in the table. And the next t-shirt sold, two t-shirts, is going to be $12.60. So I put that in between the 10 and the 15. It's not perfect but that's okay, it's in between the 10 and the 15, probably about halfway. And the next one from our table was three t-shirts would be $18.90. So I'm gonna put that between the 15 and the 20, but a little bit closer to the 20, because $18.90 is closer to $20 than it is to $15. Do you see how we're plotting each of these points? And I'm hoping that you also notice that this is making a nice, beautiful straight line. So instead of plotting all of those other points, why don't you make it nice and easy for yourself and just draw that line to go through to the edge of the graph. That way we can see how much each one is going to be without having to plot individual points painstakingly one at a time. So now my grid, my graph looks like this. I'm gonna get my line up on here on my miniature version as well. Complete your graph now. And we've got four different models. We have our words, 
our table, our equation, and our graph, and now I want you to think about this question here. Which relationship would you prefer to use to determine the profit if 100 t-shirts were sold? Would you like to use the table? Would you like to use the graph? Would you like to use the equation? Can you use the words? Let's do a quick 20-second discussion with your groups. Which one would you prefer and why? Again, here's the question. Online students, just think about this question. Come to your own conclusion. Which one would you prefer? All right, and voices off, please. Which one would you rather do? Good, I love all of these hands. Charlie, which one would you rather? Why would you rather do the table? Okay, so I think what you're saying is, if I wanted to know a bigger number like 100, you said that we'd have to look at the previous one and know the 99 before that, right? But then if we know need the 99, then wouldn't we also need the 98 and the 97 and the 96? So that means, would mean how many rows would you need in your table? 100. You really want to make 100 rows in your table just to get to that question? Who does? Yeah, I didn't think so. I don't. And I know you're saying, well, we don't have to use a table that way. We could just skip to 100, right? However, are you really using the table or are you using this relationship right here? Are you using the equation if you're skipping ahead in the table? Does that make sense? Even though we can organize it in a table, you're actually using this beautiful relationship, this beautiful abstract relationship of our equation. Is there anybody who would rather use the graph? Okay, we have one student want to use the graph. Why? Okay, and then if we use our graph, take a look at what we have to do. This graph only goes to 15. Look at how big your graph is on your paper. Did you make it to 100? I didn't think so. Here's, here is the same graph digitally. I'm actually going to remove this constraint so that line extends. Notice what I'm using? Desmos. We talked about this, that this is a great calculator. This only goes to 15, so that means I'm going to have to zoom out, right? So let's zoom out. Where does it go to now? Still not high enough. Where does it go to now? Let's keep zooming out. How does it, oh, I finally made it to 100. So now let's figure out how much it is. Oh, we can't really tell, can we? It is 630, but can you tell that just by looking at the graph? No, you guys use some extra information in order to do that, right? And what you really used is, although this table was really helpful for helping us see the pattern, and although the graph is also helpful for its own reasons, when it comes right down to it, sometimes that equation, even though it might be harder to find, that equation is actually a little bit more helpful. So me personally, I would prefer to use the equation. Hopefully I've also convinced you guys that the equation is going to be best. Because in order to use the equation, you know the only thing that I really need to do is take that t, and I know that t is going to be 100. See that? Because t-shirts is 100. And then you just multiply that by $6.30. And that's how Siley got that the profit was equal to 630. Looking at the graph and using this information, she knew that that part on the graph was 630. Let's make it quantitative, though, because this is very abstract, right? This is our answer, but it is abstract. How can we make this abstract answer quantitative? Let's make it make sense in the real world. What does this mean? Jaden. Good. And what is the profit for, for that? Oh, but we're, that's not what this says. This says 630. So it would be $630 for 100 shirts. Exactly. So we're making our abstract answer that's very, very mathy, quantitative by bringing it back into the real world. But we use the equation to help us do that. So we used all of these different math models. What does this math practice mean? Put it in your own words. That's what I need you to do now. 
knowing that this is what you're also going to be doing in Canvas for your homework tonight, this math practice means what? When I say model with mathematics, what does that mean? Go ahead and write this down. And I'm looking for a few students who are willing to share out, and I'll repeat your answers into the microphone for the online students. When I say model with mathematics, what does it mean? Everyone's still writing. Think about the models that we did use. We used a table and a graph and an equation, but we also decided that one of them was better for this specific problem. Yes, Jaden. Good. Uh, Jaden said that this means using pictures, tables, graphs, things that you can see, and let's finish that to help us solve problems. Okay, great. Seth. Uh, do hands on visualizing to solve mathematics problems. Good. And now I'm going to help you out with this reflection piece. I can model with mathematics by, you can choose to write what I write. You can come up with your own goal for this reflection piece. I can model with mathematics by using multiple representations in a problem. Or maybe instead, I can model with mathematics by using tables, graphs, and equations. Be more specific. I even like including pictures, because pictures are a great math model. And that's it, folks. That is math practice for model with mathematics. Uh, make sure you come in tomorrow to see math practice five, and that's it. Have a good one.